Hi everyone, so today I have a video for you sponsored by Tonic Studios for their new craft kit. It is a festive town kit, so I'm super excited to check this one out. I love all things Christmassy. I'm assuming that's what it is with the word festive in there, so let's open it up and check it out. So they did send this free of charge from my review, um, and of course all opinions are my own. Any links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So with this one, they do have different options. Um, I'll have them all linked in the description box. What I mean by that is like monthly or just pick up the one and not have a subscription or however you want to do that. With a subscription, of course, you get 10% off the site whenever you place an order. You just have to use the code TCK and be an active member or subscriber, right? Um, okay, well, this was tucked in here, so I'll just bring this out. Oh my goodness, yeah, I was going to say, this is a big boy. This is 7-inch square ivory white card blanks, um, 10 of each. And I mean, they feel really nice and thick already in my hands here. Um, the cards are 111 pounds, so that's roughly the 300 GSM that they usually measure or weigh these things in, so um, really nice. I'll put those to the side for a moment. This is your basic stuff. So here you get a um, folder every few months or so. I'm not sure if it's quarterly, but I believe it is. And so this uh, edition comes with the folder to hold, or the binder, should I say, to hold your folders. And this is the folder. So every month there's a folder. It's a split folder with the split, you know, what's going on with the dies and the stamp set. Sometimes, you know, I have samples, so mine looks a little bit different sometimes, but generally you have your little sticker. And you can take the sticker and place it on the folder wherever you'd like but you know generally I would oopsie put it like right in here and since I'm doing this on the fly it might be a little crooked so now I see that I know it's the festive craft town um, set of dies and stamps photopolymer stamps and dies so I'll bring this out well not photopolymer dies but you know <laughs> photopolymer set, uh, stamp set and then we have our dies so just such a cute little set here as you can see there's like a little pennant or bunting you have the little um, Santa with the sleigh and that kind of like shadow or yeah a view I love this kind of view and then it has all kinds of cute little doodads and bobs here with the uh, holly and like um, star shapes like snowflakes there we have Merry Christmas Happy Holidays Happy Christmas and then some other little creatures and characters there and this is the uh, meat and potatoes of course the stamp set and the dies and again it's called festive town so as you can see, you can create like a little scenery or however you want to use this. Oh, super cute to put these like on a box, you know, like on each side or something. But they look like they're meant to be um, placed on a card or however you'd like to use them. So what I'm trying to show you is like this one is the background or shadow or blackout piece, I guess, because this is going to be the pieces that go along with that. So you cut this and you have, it's not an inlay. I don't know if I can show you how it has these three pieces so this would cut that would cut that would cut so you have the different pieces that you would fill that in with on this one it's the one piece actually no this one also cuts three pieces it's this piece this piece and this piece this one has some embossing in it this one has like the little brickwork and that would um excuse me so that would go into this one down here at the corner and then this one goes with this guy and it's the one piece here and it has a little piece that cut out these will emboss um, these little areas because they don't cut but when they're open like that but you also have tons of little windows that have a blackout and the uh, topper piece you know this uh, different shape has a topper piece this one's like a little door this one's all these different little like uh, pieces that you can then pop in to the different shapes right like this one here coordinates more with that some uh, different layer layering pieces there look at these little guys oh my gosh so many just pieces to make it more fleshed out right your little city we have little uh, lamp post here um some more accent pieces you know a uh, little gift we have trees we have a little cat stockings and uh santa claus hat there oh my gosh and then background pieces for those pieces too Oh, so cute. Oh, and little fencing there. Again, shutters or some kind of window. We have this piece here that can be um, something that you would cut, you know, to put your sentiment possibly or however. Snow, <laughs> like a little snow cap something or other. So you can play with that. At least that's what it looks like to me. And again, this guy here has that little embossing. And then he has this piece that he coordinates back to over here. Little snow cap pieces there too. So cute. Okay, and then we have the embellishment pieces so let's check these guys out oh i reached in here and first thing oh i have not tried this the nouveau clear mark embossing pen so it, it basically puts out um water marking like clear ink right and then you can 
or whatever embossing so you can do it by hand or let's just like add a little something to like one of the little houses or whatever it is and then pour the embossing powder and then uh, set that so really a uh, fun thing to use and then we have the aqua shimmer and opal quartz so this is clear of course uh, opal quartz which is really nice for something like this add subtle iridescent shimmer effect I don't know if you can see in there it has that look there and all you do with these guys if I use it here if I don't you just take this you know you take that off you take this yellow band off and then you screw it back on so that it pops the cartridge that's in there give it a little shake and you're good to go just squeeze 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 until it starts coming out <laughs> um, oh look at this everything's so like frosty and cute I don't exactly know the name of this one because it's uh, not on there but it's some um, uh, embossing powder it looks like it ends up being a little bit clear sparkly I don't think it has like a white color to it but it looks clear and sparkly is what it looks like. Um, really great to use with that uh, embossing pen. And then we have uh, crystal drops in the color um, navy blue. It's a metallic drop this time. And then this one is uh, glitter accents in Atlantic Drift. Nice big bottle. These are um, regular size bottles there of those products. Oh, cool. Oh, what else do we have in here? Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I have the Craft per Perfect double sided tissue tape. A great amount of that. It's like a quarter inch, I would say, six millimeter. Um, and then there was a little note in here. So it says that missing from the sample kits are the mini gemstones in pink. So you also have some pink mini gemstones that look really adorable. So there's a little picture there. <laughs> so uh, again, like I said, I get samples that are slightly different there. And let's look at the array of paper here. I'm going to take a moment to kind of splay it out here and I'll be right back. I take a moment and I do that here on camera with you guys. It would have been a good one for that because this is a gorgeous array of colors. Look at this. So this is the Craft Perfect and um, this is one of my favorite pinks to use and I'm not sure if it's the coral color because I know it's not bubblegum pink. I think that one's lighter but those are the ones I use quite often. Um, a light blue kind of icy color and then the gray. And those are all classic cards so um, oh and one more I was gonna say that felt really really thick um, a creamy colored one that's also a classic card and classic card is textured like a linen weave kind of texture sorry if you can see that or if you can't see that should I say and on the back it's a little smoother so a lot of times if I stamp on this I, I die cut on the back side and I stamp on that side or if I'm just gonna die cut I die cut it on the side that has the texture um, oh, this beautiful icy blue with that um, little kind of pebbled look to it really really pretty gorgeous gorgeous blue glitter and then my little sugar um, <laughs> uh, white uh, glitter paper love it their paper doesn't shed it cuts really nicely it's great stuff and look at this super metallic paper it's one-sided um, so are the glitter papers and the handmade kind of like this mulberry paper um, but look how metallic that is I'm gonna try to put it that way so it's not so reflective but there you go like mirror card basically excuse me and then some beautiful pearlescent colors and that gorgeous like navy blue and this uh, pinky kind of peachy color <laughs> creamy uh, just gorgeous and um, again with the link or just there on the product page they'll always tell you exactly the names of the papers and everything else that's actually in the kit like I said I have samples so sometimes mine varies just a little bit uh, okay so what I'm gonna do is put some of these items to the side and we will get started okay guys so I am gonna make like a little gift box and I already started cutting my paper down but I just want to show you from the same black paper just from my stash and like white heavyweight cardstock I cut down a piece of paper to make a one inch like box base and then the topper is gonna have a half inch lid so that you're gonna see some of the black uh, box base show through right around the sides so this is um, a six inch square piece of black cardstock and this one is a five inch square piece of white cardstock I also want to mat the top of this whenever I get to getting that so it's gonna make a four inch square box um, so to mat that I'm gonna cut the rest of this black paper at three and seven eighth inch square and then on top of that I think I'll pop another white piece of paper and I think this one's probably too small I could go this small but I want a smaller edge around so if that's three and seven eighth inches square the next one the white box um, topper part is going to be three and three quarter inch square okay 
And I'll be right back so we can create a box and then we'll decorate our little top with our die cuts and some other fun things. Okay. I'll be right back. These pieces to the side. So I'm going to use this scoring board that helps me create a box. If you don't have one, all it's doing is when I take the measurement on the other side for the box base, is it's making like, let's say here. Okay, this is my five inch. It's going to be the top. I want half inch um, sides on my box. So I'm going to score at half an inch. And this is a true half inch. Okay, so half inch there. Turn it to the next side. Half inch there. Turn to the next side. And of course you can make your box much bigger. I'm just doing a little sample here for y'all. Um, it'll have a one inch space, four inch uh, square box. So this is a true half inch all around. Um, to make your box base, what you want to do is that, uh, for this one, it's gonna be a one inch base, so one inch. But you really want it to be a little bit like more inside of that, uh, larger than the one inch, like one and 16th or one and one thirty second. Now I don't know if you have a board that does that with the 16th inches, um, but that's what you want. You don't want like one and one eighth and then turn it and do one and one eighth because it's going to be very small. It's going to take a whole, uh, you know, um, it's it's going to take almost a quarter inch off <laughs> if you do that to the inside. So this will just be kind of floating on top. It won't hold it snugly. It needs to be just a little bit bigger. Um, your score line than what you did to make the box top okay so hopefully you have something that helps you with that but if not again you just want to add like it like it's just a hair more um, all around so what I'm turning is turning this because this does help me make a box base and again when I go to score one inch it's already accounting for that littlest bit and I can show you actually if I bring it back over here on the regular side it is it's like one and one sixteenth as you can see it's between the actual one inch and the eighth so you really just want it to be like a one and one sixteenth hopefully you have something that has sixteenths or just eyeball it you know what I'm saying you can kind of move it over and put your line <laughs> uh, whatever it is you want but okay one inch and the reason I'm doing one inch is because my base is one inch if I want it to be the same as this I would be scoring at half an inch but I'm just turning it every time and going one inch one inch one inch because that's what I want my base size to be okay and I think you've seen me do this before if you are new perhaps not but um i'll just simply go to each edge and i'll show you this one because i know in the white it's hard to see you're just going to pick one side to go up into right to the score line and then notch out the rest now you can notch it a little bit smaller like as you can go right from the corner whatever it is that you um like it's just helping you so that when you go to fold this and notch it into here it just fits a little nicer instead of having the whole square piece that's going to be touching your score line so I go around the whole thing straight up and in and I just kind of do it that way so I don't forget straight up and in it's always the same straight up on that score line and again notch away and I will do the same thing for the box top and now I'm going to do now is just score on my score lines and you can definitely Use a bone folder for that too. But basically you're folding everything in, right? So towards the wrong side, this guy in here. And I'll do the same thing for this piece and for the box base. Also just folding in and folding over. So that's why we notch that out. So when this one comes up, it just fits in here nicely. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, and for the same for the box base and the box lid, just put some glue if you like to use. I like to use white glues, they hold up better over time. But whatever glue you like to use, just go around. We just meet this up really nicely. I hold it. If you have little clippies that can help you, you can just move on by putting a little clip. I usually put it right at the edge, right at the junction here, because that'll help hold it the best. And you can move on to the next one. Okay, and just glue all the tabs in, and you'll have a little box base, and I'll do the same thing with the box top. Okay, so I think I'll let those sit long enough. And so we have our little box top and our box base, and there we have it. Okay, so we're going to decorate this in just a minute. I do have that black base that I'll put right on top of that just to bring that back in, kind of tie it all together, and then this little guy's going to mat in here. We're going to do a little something on this uh, piece here before I keep going. So let me grab, I'm going to get this guy going, and I need, I got this Midnight Surf for my stash. I need a blending tool and a mat, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm just using the tonic mat. Again, clean it off when you're done and you're good to go. It won't stain or anything like that. Uh, let's see here. With this little guy, I'm going to give it a little shake previously. Previously? Prior? I don't know what I was going to say. Let's put that back on there. Let's get this in here. Uh, so this is actually a cap. And then inside of that, when you pull that off, is this guy. So you could have pulled that off, but really it doesn't let you. If you <laughs> remove this, um, that won't stay there because this was in the way. You know what I'm saying? So I just pull the whole thing off. It stays with it. Take the little green spacer off, and then it pops. And then I can put this back on if I would like, but that just pops on. And I'm just going to give it a shake. You don't want to shake too much because you don't want to create bubbles, but you're just trying to get that shimmer that's in there going. And then it says here, press. So I know it's hard to see, but it's just the same color as the thing. And you can start seeing it come in. I don't know if you saw that at all. Let me see. There you go. You see that little liquid that's coming in here? And so this one's clear. So I'm just going to start to see if it starts coming out. Ooh, that's so pretty. It's like that kind of iridescency exactly that does like a purpley kind of color, which is interesting because I chose this blue. But I was thinking I might do the edges of some purple just to bring in some more color, but that's okay. So I'm just going to put this all over. Just another added layer, a little something. Okay. So it'll just be something that shows up in the background. And then you just put this on here. And I always store these up. I mean, it's up to you however you like to store them. But I'm going to place this right here because that is a color that I will use often. And I'm just going to take a little blending tool and just add a little blue in the top here, okay, in this top area. So just took a little moment to do it very softly. And what's nice about this kind of thing is that you can pick the ink up off of this because it's not like soaking into a piece of paper, right? So you can just kind of use that, keep using that. And I want it to look kind of like a cold night sky. So I think that's good. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I am gonna hit this with the uh, heat tool though, just to dry it up a little quicker. Uh, Cause I'm gonna stamp the um, Santan sleigh in the background. And then we're gonna put our little buildings here on front. So. Let me do that, and I'll be right back. So I cleaned that off, and then um, I just want to see. I'm going to use this little house, I believe. So I just want to see about where I would put Santa. If I'm just going to stamp it right on here, and I think it'll fit nicely just up in here. So let me open that up. So this sweet little area to work on. It's like a you know three and three quarter inch square. So I'm just trying to see, think about my little village and how I want to build it. I think it'll be the one house. I might do the tower or maybe the. Um, Little light. I'm going to turn this over now. This is not intended to be a stamping mat, but honestly, it has that feel to it, so it's already out, so I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> so, on this side, if you want to use a precision or a stamping tool, you know, go for it. I'm going to stamp this off because I'm going to stamp directly on my project. I just want to make sure that it's ready to go. Um, you know, this is a uh, photopolymer stamp, so it has a little dispersion layer on it that's a little bit sticky. Um, if you want to, you know, stamp this and something that will hold uh, embossing powder, or like that clear embossing powder, and it'll be sparkly, you can definitely do that. I'm just going to ink that up and just make sure that, I mean, that's pretty great already. Okay, so I'm just going to take that and stamp him, like, in here, kind of like that. <laughs> and again, because this pushes back up against you, it's a really nice stamping surface. And there he is. Okay, so let me put some of this stuff away and I'll be right back. Choosing, what, choosing which little house. So I think I'll use this house, like I mentioned before. And I think I'm going to go with the little street light. Because that way over here I can put my little sentiment. So if this guy was like there, it has a little area that gets cut out. And I'll cut that out again with like a yellow paper or something that looks like it's glowing. Um, and then we'll have this piece. And then, again, does these little inlay areas, which would be these guys. It does embossing, should I say. Uh, we'll need those, and then I think the door is over here. Um, this one here. Okay, so let me grab some papers, and then we'll get that going. But this is obviously going to be on top of that. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'll clean this up in just a minute here. But I brought all these things, so I'm going to do the background of the house, this outline in silver, that shiny silver. I'm going to do the house itself with the gray classic card that's there. Uh, and these pieces I'll cut out with silver also, just so it kind of, you know, goes back to whatever's going on with the back of the house. So this part, these two will be silver. Of course, I'll cut two of these and only one of this one. And in these areas with the door, like the little um, overlay parts, I'll cut from this um, 
uh, pearlescent blue. I think that looks really pretty. And then I also got a little piece of snow. I think I might put that like right there. So I'm going to take this and cut it from the um, white glitter paper. And that's that. And then this black one, I'll just grab a scrap of black paper from what I cut earlier. Run that through. And also run it through some yellow paper just so that we have like a little yellow light on the inside, okay? okay and I'll be right back. Some different pieces here. So I'm going to do, look at how cute the little um, brick work there. And I was just running it through. Nothing special, no embossing or anything. It's just um, the pressure of the machine gives you that look. Um, so I'm going to glue this down. And I can also see the spaces there of like where these other pieces should go. So for right now, I'm just going to glue that right to here. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue these little guys together. Let me get a little bit closer. So just like this guy to the other piece. And since this, these are metallic pieces, they do take a little bit longer to dry, um, the glue, because it just is pearlescent on metal and it takes a little second. But I like to just clean up as much of the glue as I can before I place it on here. That way there's less glue to clean up if any comes out, but that looks pretty good. Nothing really squeezed out. Just a little right there. And I'll do the same thing with these guys and the doorway. I'm going to put the door on there and then I'll do my lamp when we actually go to put it down because this little piece needs to inlay in there and I'll be right back. Okay so I have those pieces nestled together and for these guys all I'm going to do is just actually look at this piece and see where they have the little outlines of the shapes and put my pieces on there. So it's about here A little bit over this way, and then this one here, all the way down there, and then our last one. And then what I'm going to do is just adhere, how cute is that? I'll straighten them out a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm just going to adhere these things together before I continue more because I want this down really nicely like that. Oh, hopefully I was in on camera there for you guys sorry I just looked up I forgot that I had zoomed in I really like to put glue almost to the very edge so that it holds things down really well and if I want it to be even flatter I'll put a whole like um, die cut machine on top to keep it smashed down like this uh, but I'm gonna hold this down and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to my box top okay so just take this and glue it down on top okay, so I just place that on there so cute. Okay, so our little house is our focal point. Um, I just placed this on here with the glue, so I'm being very careful not to move that too much. And then we're going to have our little lamp post here. And then this little portion in the center of that. I do want to place this on here. And I just thought it would be cute to add this on here. Look at that. A little snow, so let's glue that down. And then here I'm probably going to use this label to stamp one of the sentiments put this back over here and so you know maybe right in here somewhere so let me just glue this piece down sorry so I'm um, just putting some glue on that guy and we'll place this here it's so funny to be working on something like this especially I woke up this morning in sunny San Diego and it was a hundred percent humidity <laughs> you can just feel it you know I was like now this has to be more than 80 <laughs> percent so as you can feel when it's not humid at all it's like oh it's gonna be a good day but yeah that humidity just not great so let me put this on here put a little glue all down my little lamp post I'll go ahead and get that adhered at least not in that direction there. So cute. And then here I'll just put some glue down in this instead of on that small piece. And then I'll just bring this guy over. Pop him in there. Aww. So yeah, I went with a little scrap of gold paper that I had. Because I figured we have that silver. Bring in the shiny gold. I think it'd be cute. And then this guy I'm also going to glue it down flat. Because I'm going to pop up my little sentiment there. And just bring it over like this. Okay, so let me grab some paper. Um, let me see. Yeah, you know what? I'll stamp it on 
We do have the white textured linen. It's a, a little off-white, but I also have this one. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to stamp it on the back of this. But let me grab a sentiment and some ink, and I'll so better use the Happy Holidays. And... You know, this is going to be a good size here. So I just wanted to grab a scrap of paper so I can... Again, dispersion layer that's on this. Oh, looking great. Okay. And I'll stamp it kind of like down in here. That way I know I have enough room for my... Uh, this little guy. Okay, so I'm just going to tape that in right here and run it through. Just about there. And I'll have my little sentiment. Okay, guys, and I already cut that out. Look at the pretty uh, embossing around the edge. What a fun die for lots of sentiments that fit in there. I already put some dimensional adhesives on the back of that. And I'm just going to pop this like right here, I think. So cute. And this could be, you know, a card. Again, I made it four inches square. You can make it whatever size, add a few other houses and all that kind of fun stuff. And then we have, oh, sorry guys for the rough edit just in case, but I just remembered I want to pop on some of the uh, glitter accents. So we'll do that and then we'll put our little lid on our gift box there. Um, really sweet. Look at that. I think it's going to be fun. So what I usually do with these guys, just to start, just to make sure we don't have an air bubble and I can see there's no air. I'll usually do like a little practice run, but you know what? I think we're good to go. And I'm just going to add little dots. And how you make them smaller or larger or whatever it is, is literally you hold on to it and you let go. <laughs> so if I want to make a larger dot, I hold it for a little bit longer, like squeeze it for a little bit longer or a little bit less time whatever it is and I'm just gonna go around everywhere and add some little dots some smaller some larger all over okay this top area so if you can see uh, there it is on camera the little shimmer that's down here of that inking that sweet reflection from the paper in the background there and I'll just add a ton of these so thank you so much uh, Tonic for sponsoring the video for sending these items for review I'll have uh, images coming up guys I'll have the links in the description box and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.